Okay, please be working, Mr. YouTube Man. We would love if the YouTube was working to stream it live. Hey, there we go. Now we're talking. So we should actually be able to talk and see things in chat right now. Life should be just gravy. If there is anyone out there in the uh, the land of watching this, which should hopefully be at least more than one person, hopefully up to and including eight, that would be lovely. We're sound checking. We're looking. Can we see chat? We can see ourselves. There we go. Hey, anyone in Dr. Gorick's Percussion Methods class, 2020, spring semester, George College and State University, do me a favor and actually say something in chat so I know that people are out there. And then uh, I'll get started. Actually, let me check my phone. We'll see if anyone has said anything in the group me because this is an official class right now. You can tell just how official it is, right? 201, we have officially started class. Oh my goodness, I do see people saying things, but wow, I have to run all the way over here to read it. Robin, Connor, Haley, there we go. Okay, great. <clears throat> so, as it was requested, I'm going to go over the basic formalit stuff that you need to know, right? So, number one, I always say that if you are not a percussionist, you should probably not teach four mallets because it can really screw up your students, right? Teaching improper technique can really wound them for life. That's really unfortunate, right? So, um, maybe leave it to a professional, but if you absolutely have to, there are tons of resources out there, but I'm just going to go over the sort of basics and the difference between the three different types of four mallet grips. Um, again, I am monitoring chat, so if anyone has any questions, just let me know, and I'll just do the run over thing and try and read it real quick and then get back to it. Okay, so again, there are three four mallet grips that people generally use. The one that you'll see taught most and the one that used to be standard for the DCI is the Stevens grip. Okay, and so that looks like you can see here, here. You'll notice that this first mallet is held with the same fulcrum of a snare drum stick. Just further down the stick, you'll notice the thumb going directly up the stick in that first knuckle. And that sort of sits like here. It doesn't sit in that spot, um, but it is able to move around in this way. The second mallet you'll put essentially in the center of your palm here and it goes up between the middle and the ring finger. And that's held by the pinky and the ring, right? Looks a little like that. You'll notice there's barely any of that mallet popping out of my hand there. And so that's what that looks like. We'll see the snare drum fulcrum in that first mallet and then the second mallet held with the pinky. The way we extend this interval is by sort of rolling the mallet along the finger. Okay, yeah, we see more people in chat. That's good. Thanks for showing up, everyone. We're talking about the Stevens grip right now. If you missed the beginning of it, finding the stream, uh, this will be saved as a VOD on YouTube, so feel free to go back and check that out. Okay, so there you go. That's the Stevens grip. Um, that's Again, that's what a lot of people use when they first start nowadays. It provides very wide intervals. Your intervals can get big. It also provides a lot of independence. Uh, the two mallets can function very well independently of each other. Um, the next two grips that we're going to talk about are cross grips, where the mallets actually cross in the hand. And so that uh, stifles that independence a little bit that we get from that Stevens grip. So the first cross grip that we'll talk about is the traditional grip, okay? So for the traditional grip, you can lay the mallets out like this, and you're going to take the inside mallets, right? We call these the inside. We call these the outside just because it's where the hands are in relation to the body. You take the inside mallets, 
and you cross them over the outside mallets. Then what you're going to do is you hold your fingers like this. You take your index, put it in that space between them, and then grip the outsides of the mallets with the thumb and rest of the finger. So that'll look like this. Again, you have that index finger going in between the two mallets. Okay? And so, again, just to show you that, we take the inside mallets, cross them over the outside, index finger in the middle, thumb and rest of the fingers on the outside. Okay? So what this one can do is you can expand the interval by pushing with the thumb and the index, and you can contract the interval by releasing. The pressure put on by the pinky and the um, ring finger will automatically close that, right? Or just by applying a little extra pressure. You'll notice that by keeping my fingers loose, I can maintain intervals, and then I'm just sort of supporting it with my thumb and the rest of my hand to hold that interval in place, right? But again, the thumb and the index can push it out, and the gripping of the pinky and the ring can pull it back in. Okay, good. We see more people in chat. Thank you, everyone, for showing up. That is the traditional grip. Again, that's inside over outside. Push to expand, pull the contract. Okay? The second cross grip is called the Burton grip. It's created by famous jazz vibraphonist Gary Burton. For this one, we're going to cross the sticks, but instead of inside over outside, we're going to do outside over inside. Okay? You grip the sticks the same way, putting that index finger in the middle and then gripping on the outsides with the thumb and the rest of the ring and index, or ring and pinky, okay? And so that'll look like that in the hands. Um, you'll see that. Now, this one is different from the traditional because the interval is controlled by the fingers in the hand. Notice how my pinky and ring finger are just twisting that mallet in my hand. The one held in between my index and middle finger, completely stationary. And the rest of the fingers control the interval using that inside mallet. Okay, This one is really good because it gives a lot of power to the outside. So you'll actually see a lot of people playing using these two mallets, right? That's just sort of how this style was invented. That's what it's for. You're supposed to be able to play quick with it, right? Gary Burton, if you know, he plays a lot of lo notes really quickly. And so, um, that he, like I said, he created that to try and be able to do that. So those are our three basic four mallet grips. Uh, just if you have any questions, ask them right now. And then really quickly, I'm going to take five minutes, maybe less, to go over the stroke types. Because in a four mallet grip, we have four main stroke types. Remember, we talked about the snare drum with the full up, down, and tap. Uh, with the marimba, everything is a full stroke, but we have different ways to move the hands to create different patterns. Uh, so let's see. Okay, doesn't look like anyone has any questions. I'll assume you're all taking notes and just absorbing all of this. Yes, it's all, it's a lot, right? It's a lot. Um, just be aware that if you do want to teach a student, you're always just asking them how they feel, right? Getting sorts of blisters here and getting blisters here is kind of normal, but don't let it get out of hand, right? If you look, my my middle finger is permanently engorged because of playing Steven's grip. It happens, you know. Okay, so four basic stroke types, okay? We have two things. One of them is uh, referring to hitting one at the same time. One is doing doubles, right? So the first one that we have is the single independent. It is just saying, I will independently move one mallet. Single independent, right? Very simple. OK? 
Okay. Notice when I do this, essentially the idea is that one mallet is not moving that much when I do it. The inside or the outside mallet is going to move independently of the other one. So again, we call that a single independent. Okay. The next one is the bump ba bump single alternating. Right? So that's just different motions alternating around. Okay? Uh, we also have the double vertical, which, hey, guess what? It's a double and you use a vertical motion. Simple, right? Double vertical, right? We can do that with both hands. Again, note that every time I'm returning to the up position, because playing marimba, we use full strokes, right? Nice, big, full strokes, okay? Now, we have this other stroke type called the lateral. And so what the lateral is going to do, we're going to get two motions, or two strokes with one motion. And so essentially by rotating, dropping our hand and rotating our wrist inside to outside or outside to inside, we're going to be able to create two notes. And just note by how far the separation between the sticks is, I can create different spaces between the notes. Right? And so you can have things that are literally um, 16th notes strung together, right? Or you can have them closer together, whatever the music calls for. Right? And so again, we call that a lateral. Very exciting. Uh, again, all of this is in Lee Howard Stevens' Method of Movement book. If you're going to teach the Stevens grip, it has a lot of great exercises in it. It has a very big front material on how to do the Stevens grip properly. So I highly suggest checking that out. Okay. I'm going to send everyone the Zoom code in the group me, and we're going to get started on that midterm review. Thanks, everyone, for checking this out. Hope you found it interesting.